Hello, thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Nick Dyer and I work for Arctic Wolf. Today we're covering Arctic Wolf and the Security Operations Cloud, supercharging your hybrid cloud security posture. Uh, I'm an EMEA systems engineer here at Arctic Wolf and you can reach me at, on Twitter at Nick underscore Dyer underscore. So with that, I'm going to take you through how to enhance your security posture for your hybrid cloud and how Arctic Wolf and us being the leader in security operations is going to be able to take you from naught to a thousand in a very, very short space of time to supercharge your security posture. So the very first thing I want to cover is really just thinking about security and just thinking about where we are in, in your security journey and your security posture. And you might be thinking about the, the tools and the products and the, the things that you have in-house today. And the real thing about you know, security is it's a never-ending journey. This is something that pretty much never stops. You know, One day you're perfectly secure, the next day everything's completely changed again. And when you think about security and the world that we live in these days post the pandemic, we're really thinking more about cyber risk. The cyber risk does not equate to buying a product or buying a, a tool. Cyber risk is more about how to operationalize the tools and the products and the platforms in order to protect the business um, across all assets of risk. So when we think about risk, we really believe that cybersecurity now has more of what we call an effectiveness problem rather than a tools or a product problem. And in a, in a study that was taken by IDG last year, 87% uh, of all security leaders around the world believe that their organizations were falling short in identifying and addressing cyber risk. And the reason being is that cyber risk is not something that you can close overnight, right? Cyber risk is something that we're having to really in, uh, iterate on and innovate with. And it's not just fixing problems. In fact, cyber risk is also about getting ahead of problems. So when we think about security today, we're really more thinking about incidents. And when you think about incidents, you've got the likelihood of an incident, and then you've got the impact of an incident. So first off, with the likelihood of an incident, that's really more about making sure that we're up to date with things like patches and vulnerabilities. And the problem is because of the pandemic and uh, because we all had to work from home and, and some of us were, were, were also, um, you know, kind of not working at all. when We were shutting down businesses temporarily. And also the other thing that we've seen now in a post pandemic world is people are now, you know, working remotely pretty much 24 seven. And this is the way that it is. So really now the likelihood of an incident has become impacted. Um, so 59% of all organizations are going to be breached within a year. It's now a flip of a coin whether you get breached or not. But the other problem is, from a study that we did in 2020, we found that there's now a 40-day increase in the time it takes to patch critical vulnerabilities just because of furlough or, or staff shortages or just we just haven't got around to be able to, to resolve them because there's just too much to do and alert fatigue is a really real thing. So therefore, then we have the impact of an incident. So this is when we've got, um, we've potentially got a security incident that potentially is a breach. And there's some, some harrowing stats here. Um, so in a recent IBM report, it's now 212 days that it takes to detect an incident. Now, in the industry, we believe that the ransomware or security incidents just comes along and you get hit one day when you come into work. Well, actually, that's not what happens. What's now happening is there's data exfiltration as a service. So what's happening is uh, bad actors are in your environment for, for potentially weeks or even months, um, exfiltrating data and seeing any kind of sensitive information or potentially you know, confidential or even embarrassing information that they can take to then uh, exfiltrate the data, but also then to extort uh, you to pay the ransom. And... What we're now seeing is the average cost of a data breach in the UK is around 3.2 million pounds, which is, again, a, a nasty statistic that came out from the National Cyber Security Centre in 2021. And speaking of the NCSC, um, they've just released, recently released a report in the last few days, and they, they reported that they've worked on more ransomware incidents in the first four months of 2021 than they did in the whole of 2020, 
which in turn have been um, over three times more than all the incidents that they saw in 2019. These, these are just, you know, just crazy stats. And and the, the problem is now is that, you know, none of us are, are really going to be alone in this. And this is where the, the impact is coming in. And that's what cyber risk is. Cyber risk is the likelihood of an incident along with the impact of an incident put together is what the business deems to be the risk to the business about where we need to start thinking. So in a post-pandemic world, most organizations are now coming down uh, this pipeline of, of innovation. So we're starting to see public cloud or software as a service deployments first. So we're not looking to deploy anything on-prem now. We're looking to move new projects to the public cloud or to software as a service, and then start lifting and shifting our old kind of legacy applications to the cloud as a second or a third instance. And because of that, we're also now just adding more tools, right? Because now I'm adding more data in the cloud. I need more tools to get visibility in the cloud. I also need more tools maybe to look at SaaS platforms, what's goes, what's it goes with it. I do need to grow the team. Uh, and the challenge here is that it's just really, really hard to hire really good IT professionals. They're very expensive and they're very in demand. And it's even harder to hire good security professionals. Um, there's so many thousands of security jobs open here in the UK. Um, we're at a real cyber um, professional gap. And so it's just really, really high, hard to hire good people it's even harder to retain those good people because they know that they're in demand. And because of that, what we're really trying to do is just stitch everything together. So I don't really have the visibility. I don't have all the tools that I need because I don't have all the budget and I can't hire the people. So I'm just stitching together things via ad hoc processes to try and make things work. And then I've, I've got the alert fatigue, which is a really real thing. And then finally, the executives know about this. And this is what is now causing the concern to the to the executives to the business around cyber risk and with we did an it pro survey here in, in june 2021 where um we interviewed just it professionals you know in, in mid-sized organizations about how the cyber um kind of security posture and the journey was with inside those cyber uh, inside those mid-sized organizations close to three quarters of, of the respondents said that they felt that they lacked the capability to fend off a ransomware attack or a sophisticated cyber threat. 40% of all IT teams said that they felt that just cyber and alert fatigue is a really real thing. And, you know, the amount of alerts we get on WhatsApp and Teams and Messenger and just the other things that we live in day in, day out is just ridiculous. Over half of the respondents said that they, know, they ignored a known security incident to prioritize another business activity. And then one in five said that they just ignored all security alerts altogether. So I hope by hearing this, you kind of relate to this and just say that you're not alone with this, right? We're, we're all in the same boat and we're all um, feeling overwhelmed with everything that's going on. And Active Wolf are really here to help you with that, to, to become a, a true security partnership alongside our friends at Computer World. Because the things that you've been doing up to now have not been a problem. And you've got the right products. You've got endpoint protection and you've got cloud and you've got a network and you've got firewalls and where you are today this is not a product failure really where we are now it's an effectiveness and an operational failure we've got to work out how to stitch all those platforms together all those logs together all these architectures together and to be able to, to generate some effectiveness from those outcomes with people and processes and run books to make sure that we can find the signal and the noise, right? The needle in the haystack for the potential risk to your business. Because it's not about more tools. You know, the more tools you buy, the more tools you put in place, the lower your ability really is to respond to an attack. And that's what the, the mind, blog, mind boggling thing here is. You know, when we've been used to just layering more tools on top of each other, thinking that they're going to replace other tools, but they end up not really doing that, right? They just kind of become more layers in the things I have to manage. Now, to compound the problem further, cyber insurance costs are absolutely rocketing, right? They're, they're up by about a third. Some people have said that they're up by about half, you know, 50%. And the reason being is just because of the frequency and the severity of ransomware attacks 
and just the payouts of these ransomware attacks now means that cyber insurance companies are not willing just to be the, the brunt of, of the outcome of these attacks. So they're now forcing multiple uh, implementations of processes and tech in place in order to make sure that they can insure you. And by the way, roughly 43% of all customers in the UK have cyber insurance today. Um, so if you do, you've probably seen these, these premiums go up. If you don't, but you probably investigated it, you've also seen just the sheer hike in the costs to have cyber insurance. So insurers are now saying that they're willing to reduce the, the, the insurance premium if you can prove that you have investment and successfully operating a SIM or a log management platform. Now, these are you know, ridiculously expensive uh, big data uh, platforms that you have to kind of buy in, uh, normally three-year kind of uh, contracts. Um, there's also cloud operating SIMs, but you also need a 24-7 um, security operations capability with human responses to be able to operate the SIM. So you can't just buy a product and hope that it works. You've also got to buy the run books and the orchestration and the security operations and the people and the processes. And that has to run 24 seven. And to power a security operations team with 24 seven eyes on glass, you're talking somewhere in the region of seven to nine people to do that, you know, with a, with an average range of, 50 to 75,000 pounds per person. That's that's a lot of money to go along with the product. You also need to invest in and be successfully operating a good quality endpoint protection platform. You can't use, uh, you know, a tier two or a tier three endpoint protection. You need to be using um, some sort of uh, SOAR and response platform that comes with the endpoint protection. So from the tier ones, which again, cost hundreds of thousands of pounds. And then you need to implement effective vulnerability management to remediate those urgent risks. And from a recent report, again, from the NCSE, it was found that only 20% of all UK businesses had effective vulnerability management, continuous vulnerability scanning and remediation and patching in order to kind of shut down those urgent risks to your business. So you might be very lucky and have maybe one or two of these things but most businesses today just don't have any of these. And therefore that's why uh, the risk to your business is so high. And that's where Arc to Wolf absolutely can help fill some of these gaps. Because in security, we often think about, you know, these three things, which is the, the protection of my estate, the detection of threats and responding, you know, to make sure I can shut things down. But actually we need to be, going further than just these three things, right? We need to really be thinking about identification and building accurate pictures of your threat posture, as well as your attacks uh, surfaces and all of the exposures that you potentially have. You can't protect what you can't see. So if you can't identify what's out there and be able to kind of shut things down quickly across all of your attack surface, then you can't protect it. And so we absolutely need to have identification of assets. But we also need to be able to recover the business and recover my data to ensure that I'm, I'm back fast, but also do continuous improvement and make sure that I'm implementing those improvements within the business. So this is the security operations framework, um, one of which you might recognize from the NIST framework, but also from Cyber Essentials Plus. It's all about identification of assets, protecting everything across your entire estate, detecting both um, commodity and advanced persistent threats across your environment, responding to those threats and intrusions quickly, and then recovering the business as quickly as you possibly can. But it goes beyond this. NIST Frameworks Cyber Essentials Plus is a, is a once in the while accreditation to give you checkboxes. You need to go beyond that. And it's about building strategic guidance into your business. It's about knowing when um, the third party breaches or when supply chain attacks are going to happen to make sure that you can shut that down before you're exposed. It's about continuous improvement, making sure you're always hardening what you're doing day in, day out and week in, week out, week out. Because as you go through digital transformation, you need to have a security partnership to give you that guidance over time. It's also not about buying new tools or new products. This is about implementing a, a outcome over the tools and products you've already got, 
with 24 seven coverage in the platform as well. And that's what Arctic Wolf do. We're here delivering a security operations cloud that integrates into your current tech stack to gain the visibility across your attack services. So we integrate into multiple tier one and tier two endpoint vendors. We integrate into your firewalls. We integrate into your networks. We integrate into SaaS platforms like Proofpoint and Mimecast and Zscaler and Infoblox. We integrate into SaaS platforms like 365 and Google Workspace and Salesforce.com and Workday. We also integrate into cloud platforms like AWS and Azure and Google Cloud. We also integrate into identity and access management, as well as the human layer from doing dark web scanning for potential uh, leaked information, as well as potential as password reuse that could be used for password spraying within your corporate environment. So we leverage your existing tech stack to get the telemetry that we need. And the great thing about Arctic Wolf is we've been doing this since 2014. We built a true open XDR platform born in the cloud with over 3,000 customers running on this platform today across the United States, Canada, and EMEA. And the great thing about this, because we're born in the cloud, we can have you up and running in under 30 days with a very, very easy lift to get you online. And because we're going to be using your existing telemetry and your existing tech stack, it's so easy to centralize all your data into the cloud native platform to give you 24 seven storage. We don't charge you on the amount of data we ingest. It's completely unlimited. So whilst you might be looking at SIM platforms and they charge you a huge amount of money to ingest your data, we are completely unlimited. Uh, we license per user and per server. And we protect all of your instances across all of your clients. And so we can't like, then charge you on the amount of data you send because therefore you're then gonna trade off on the type of data you send. We don't license that way. We don't charge you for that. We do enrichment of your data. We do end-to-end -end correlation of all your logs from your endpoint, from the clouds, from the SaaS platforms, and from the networks. We analyze this using machine learning in real time. And we do human layer investigation through what we call a concierge delivery model. So we do 24 seven eyes on glass monitoring with human beings, 24 seven looking at your data, suppressing alerts and removing alert fatigue, but then working with you proactively via a named team of security experts to continually optimize your business, your security posture, and also working with you to remediate threats do containment of your endpoint devices and your, and your network environments, but also just help you harden your security posture proactively. And the benefit with Arctic Wolf is, again, we don't license anything from the concierge delivery model. Everything that we do is unlimited. So it's a, it, you buy it like a product per user and per, per server, but you consume this as a true end-to-end -end cloud service. And the cloud services that we offer our detection and response, both on-prem and in the cloud, to give you 24-7 threat detection, visibility of threats, and also do managed containment and shutting down and remediating threats across whatever uh, your exposure could be on the endpoint, on the network, or in the cloud. We do risk and vulnerability management, where we now scan your environment on the endpoint network and cloud, as well as the dark web to give you potential misconfigurations, potential vulnerabilities, potential zero days, and potential supply chain attacks and give you guidance about how to remediate and when that should be remediated by. And like I mentioned, only 20% of all UK businesses are doing continuous vulnerability management today. And that's absolutely something we bring to the table as part of our managed risk offering. And then finally, we deliver security awareness training, all delivered as a managed service for your end users. And security awareness training is so important because your users really are the weakest link. And if a user clicks a link, it doesn't matter how many products and tools you buy. If they click a link, that's always going to be the exposure to your business. Security awareness training today is not that great. It's kind of boring, it's dull, not many people like taking it. So we deliver a new fresh tape to security awareness training where we deliver micro learning modules directly to your end users managed and delivered by the concierge team. So there's no tuning or training modules or no content uh, packs to choose from 
There's no uh, rigorous kind of timeline to build. We deliver the awareness training to your end users based on micro learning modules that, that roll out every couple of weeks. They're two minutes long and they're based on the Netflix and YouTube style of content that we all now resonate with today. We also deliver phishing simulations and gamification as part of that service. So as part of that security operations framework, we now align all of our services to give you that end-to-end -end coverage for security operations, but also for things like cyber essentials, as well as looking at things like the insurance uh, and cyber insurance, where you might want to have coverage. Our, our um, solutions and services give you that end-to-end -end coverage to make sure that you can be insured and reduce your cyber insurance premium. And the benefit here is, this is truly the end of alert fatigue for IT administrations and IT pros. We're observing about 250 billion events per day in our data pipeline across 3,000 customers. And it really is see once and prevent for all. If one customer anywhere in the world is under attack, or we potentially see that they're vulnerable, we roll out what that looks like across all of our other customers in real time. So the only time that you get notifications from Arctic Wolf and the humans is when there is an incident and it's something we need to work on with you to potentially contain or remediate a problem. And you might not even be under attack yet, but it's a potential risk to the business that we want to shut down before you, we see that attack happen within your environment. And we're typically doing that less than five tickets per week per customer. And the outcome of that is we just save you so much time and help you sleep better at night because we're not a ticket generating machine. And we're doing this across your endpoint, your networks, and all of your cloud environments, both SaaS and infrastructure as a service. So here's a real world example of a customer who was exposed via an on-prem exchange exploit and how we responded to that. So a customer went live with us on Monday, August 2nd this year, and we onboarded them within 30 days. And typically it's a very light lift from our customers it normally takes about a couple of hours to get onboarded with us. And if you want to, we can push a panic button and have you onboarded within about two weeks if you want. So we onboarded the customer and started delivering the service on Monday, August 2nd this year. And on Saturday, they were, they were exposed. And our Active Wolf agent that we installed within the Windows and Mac environments, we started to see PowerShell enumeration commands kick off on that Exchange server. Now, that means the customer has previously been breached. But we were able to detect that even though they only installed with us and went live a couple of days previously. The Arctic Wolf Cloud Platform picked this up and the triage teams and the human teams are now investigating this. And we believe this is the re ransomware gang who are now starting to exploit the customer to start now delivering data exfiltration to then hold them um, for, for kind of date for, for um, uh, ransomware as a service. So we detect that within two minutes, and we're now triaging that, and now we're going to create the ticket and work with the customer. We then start seeing svn.exe drop to the Exchange server, PowerShell command that's kick off for a remote a code execution, and that is to a known command and control server that's now residing in Finland, again associated with the re-ransomware gang. So we detect that through our network agent and our network sensor. Then we start to see local exchange users being added to the administration group with the credentials being reset. The customer was also using Sentinel-1 from an endpoint protection perspective. And this is why we don't just rely on your telemetry to see the data because we, we have an agent that gets much more low level configuration information via Sysmon. And we can see here that Sentinel-1 only started to, to report problems when they started executing lateral movement from one device to another. Whereas we were able to see this attack roughly 40 minutes previously. At this point in time, the customer decides to take the exchange server offline and then start to come back to remediate on Monday. The concierge team then worked with the customer on Monday and we then helped them with the remediation. So we cleared down uh, the, the installation, we cleared down the credentials, we cleared down the accounts, we remove the token and we shut down those external connections. And we then go one step further. As part of our security journey, we then initiated a, a vulnerability scan on the Exchange server. 
we found that all critical vulnerabilities had been missed on that environment for about six months previously. And the reason why is the customer confirmed that their patching tool was misconfigured and therefore it was missing all of those uh, zero days that they needed to remediate against. So we then delivered them a script to identify all the previous breaches that they had been exposed to. We found a backdoor in their environment. We then removed that backdoor. We then helped them with migration to multi-factor authentication. We helped them with guidance moving to Office 365. And then we helped them with additional group policy implementations to stop PowerShell enumeration kickoff on their environment in the future. Now, the really cool thing about all of this is there is no like 90 day warm up period for Active Wolf to kind of understand what's going on. We were able to see this with all the run books and with all the remediations that we needed to do. And we saw this when the customer went live, you know, five days previously. And we continuously monitor the environment and we just get better and better over time. And the really cool thing here is we saw this within two minutes of it happening. So the time detection was two minutes at 7.30 p.m., give or take, in the evening. So I'm pressured for time today, but the, the other, the other um, area I'd like to point you to, uh, if you have a few seconds, is you can go to this website that I'm sharing on the screen right now, which is arcticwolf.com slash security hyphen awareness hyphen journey hyphen sign hyphen up. And that will take you to a website where you can put some credentials in and you can then go through the onboarding procedure and then start seeing what it's like to be an Arctic Wolf user, getting the content delivered to you and seeing what type of content we deliver for both training and phishing simulations and quizzes as well. So that's where you can go and experience that as an end user right now today, should you wish to. So the great thing is we can have you onboarded in roughly a month. Uh, we will we will do the entire walkthrough for you. We will deliver this uh, for you. We will deliver the tech for you, and we will help you tune the log sources and make sure that everything's up and running. Like I mentioned, we normally shoot for 30 days. Um, if you want to push that out, we can absolutely push it out to six weeks. If you want to push a panic button, we can bring that into about two weeks. And then what we do is we go live. And once we go live, we then start seeing all the signal and the noise, and the run books go live instantly on that day. So we start to see what's going on on the concierge team and they're starting to see things in the matrix that we need to start working with you to remediate against. But also, we then start taking you on a security journey. And this is the first 90 days. We're going to accelerate your security posture from zero to a thousand. Because we know what good looks like. You know, we've got 3,000 customers of all sorts of different sizes where we've taken them through best practice hardening of the environment. So we're going to do an architecture review and health check of your environment and review all of your um, platforms to start seeing are there any optimizations, are there any best practices, or any hardening that we need to do in your environment where we can see gaps. So it might be as part of the pandemic, you might have enabled uh, maybe some open ports for RDP on the firewall. Well, we might come along and go, are you using those ports now? Because that's a security risk. We might want to shut them down. Or you might have. Uh, kind of loosen your um, your uh, VLANs for inter-VLAN routing for some reason, we might want to harden that up. Or it might be just tuning 365 or maybe as your AD for additional hardening with additional security features we might want to turn on. Then we're going to start taking you through a steady state. When Once we get you up to a really good security posture, we then start delivering um, strategic uh, revisions to you. So we're going to take you on a journey roadmap and that's the security outcome of where you're going with digital transformation. And we call those security posture in-depth reviews. They're customized for every customer where we're gonna assess your environment for gaps and risks. We're gonna start producing configuration reviews. You might be uh, required to deliver reports uh, for maybe compliance reasons or for business reasons, or you might want to have guidance around cloud migration or 365 migration or, or even Azure migration. So we're going to start delivering these strategic reviews for you as, as we deliver the service. But also then we're going to do detours. So if, if you go through a strategic acquisition, you might want us to go and scan that customer to make sure that um, they're up to a steady state for you to, to make sure that their posture is going to be able to come on board and start analyzing some of the gaps they may have. 
aren't there. Or you may start you know, having worries about different arms of the business and you might want to scan us there. So it's about how can we help you on your roadmap moving forwards? Because security never has an end date, right? Security is always evolving. There's always new things we need to look at. And everything that we do from our concierge security team and the access to the concierge team is completely unlimited. There's no charges to any of this. Everything we do is unlimited. And it's all about delivering a true security partnership to you um, to make sure that you're delivering, you're getting value out of our services, but also to make sure um, that we're always hardening what you do um, as security ebbs and flows within the within the, the, the you know the, the lifespan of what we're living within IT today. So there's stacks of different approaches to security operations, and I've put a few on the screen here. Um, you can try and build this yourself with a SIM and maybe with something like Azure Sentinel or maybe Splunk or something else. Um, it's very, very expensive and it's going to take a long time to deploy um, and it's going to take uh, a long time to operationalize. And you don't really get that knowledge of people and processes, right? It's a multi-year project. Um, and so it, it, security personnel hiring is a real problem. And if you need seven to nine people to do a true 24 seven outcome, that's when it becomes, you know, kind of years to build and very, very expensive. We're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds to do so. Then you can start thinking about maybe looking at AI based tools, right? There are multiple kind of products out there that you can buy that will use AI to maybe shut down some things that are going on and they're not expensive. But the problem with those tools is they only deliver what they know within the tool. And you still need people and processes to use the tool properly. And if you don't have the people and the processes, you just become something else in your environment that generates noise. And the tech stack and compatibility isn't that great, but the time to operationalize is pretty good. You can have that tool installed and it can be up and running in about a month or so. But you don't get a white glove security experience. It's just another tool generating noise and maybe doing some sort of remediation, but it's not that great. Then you can look at a managed security service provider who's been in the industry for many, many years, and they will deliver you managed services on SIMs, on the tools. Uh, they will, they will um, kind of mandate the products you've got to buy. It might be a Carbon Black. It might be a CrowdStrike. It might be a Sentinel. It might be a Splunk. Um, it, again, it's very, very expensive. They can probably have you up and running in about a year or so, maybe nine months. You get some good visibility, but again, you don't really get that white glove security experience that you need. And you don't really get the outcomes that you need as well. And that's where Arctic Wolf really shines. We deliver you that full coverage across the NIST framework and the NCSE. We leverage your existing tech stack to complement the tech stack we have. We give you the broad visibility across all of your attack surface. We're completely unlimited and unmetered, but also we've invented this whole concept of the concierge security team. And we give you that real customized security journey that takes you on that, that journey within your business. And you get that real security partnership as part of the platform itself. So three tactics to switch your thinking from a tools mindset to an operation mindset. Firstly, optimize the tech stack that you have today and use the cloud in the best way possible. Embrace security operations, right? This is a really real thing. Think about how security operations and a framework can really align your business to where you need to get to within security. Uh, and that also allows you to, uh, to speak to the business around where you, your gaps may be and start thinking about what's, what cyber risk can really mean in terms of business risk. And then finally, build resilience. You know, look for additional expert guidance and 24 seven protection and implement strategic actions as well as the tactical things that you need to make sure that you're not in the news, you know, tomorrow or even next week. But if you only do one thing, you know, check your response, make sure you have an incident response plan, document your processes, make sure you know who's down to do the certain things within your response, make sure that you test the plan and also iterate that plan and watch for the lessons you learn. It might be restoring from a backup. It might be restoring from the cloud. It might be restoring to another site. It might be using a security partner to do incident response. It might be 
making sure you can shut things down within a documented period of time. Know those external partners, what they can do, how fast they're going to do it for, how much they're going to charge you to do it, right? Some partners have a, a retainer that you've got to pay for a certain period of time. And then know how fast those things should happen. It's all very well documenting that you should have a, you know, a two-hour response. But if the partner you're working with has a four-hour response, then you're not going to get that two-hour response within your business. So it's about making sure that that's documented and know that everyone's kind of with you on that response. So I want to thank you very much for your time today. I hope you found this, uh, this session useful. So really, Arctic Wolf are the leader in security operations. We're here to end cyber risk. And we're here to deliver you a concierge security outcome that delivers strategic guidance to your business and continuous improvement with no new tools and no replacement of the products you've already got and to give you 24 seven coverage. So my name's been Nick Dyer. I'm the EMEA Systems Engineer here at Arctiwolf and you can contact me at Nick underscore Dyer underscore. Thank you very much for the time and I look forward to hearing from you soon from our friends at Computer World. Thank you.